Hi, this is JNM again with a new Unity tutorial about enemy AI. The example model will be again the Samurai used in my game Irvin's Time Warp, so let's jump right into the development environment. Okay, here we are in Unity 5.6, let's start the game and this is the situation so far. The Samurai warns the player when he comes near the bridge. But the goal is that the samurai should attack the player after he stayed for a certain amount of time in a particular distance to him, let's say for 3 seconds. And when the player isn't moving away, the attack follows. Okay, so let's create the attack animation first with the animator controller. Currently, we have one animation state. This is the default idle state where the samurai is just standing there. And now I'm going to add a new animation where he is attacking with the sword. Yeah, that's cool. That's a cool animation. I think I will use this one. It's called Sword Swing Mid Right. Okay, swinging the sword with the right hand. Okay. So what I do is I drag this animation here into the animator controller and I rename this to Attack Sword Okay, and then I will need a bool variable and I will call this attack. And when this is set to true, the attack animation will be played. And therefore I need a transition from the idle state to the attack state. And this is only executed if the attack state is set to true. You see I set this has exit time to false because I don't want to wait till the animation is finished. And then I will add the transition from the attack state back to the idle state which is only executed if the parameter attack is set to false. Alright, but before we can test this I will set the animation to loop so that it is a looping animation. Here it is and I set the loop time to true. And after that I will add an animation event that is fired when the animation ends or when the attack ends. Here at this point I will add the animation event and I call this attack end. And this animation event will call a method in my script named attack end. And I use this to send the damage to the player when he is in a certain distance. But I will show this later on. Okay, and now we can test the animation. So start the game and set the attack parameter here directly to true. And here's my animation. And I can set it to false again and the character returns to the idle state. Alright, the animation works. Now let's open the script and build the AI logic. So what do we need in this script? Well, first of all, we need an animator controller. So I will define a member variable of the type animator. And I will get this component and assign it in the start method. The next variable I need is a bool variable that indicates if the player has already been warned by the samurai and he is still in this distance, that could be dangerous for him. The next member we need is a float variable. And this one is the amount of time that the player is allowed to stay in a certain distance to the samurai. And we will count this down in the update method and when the time is up, the attack will start. Okay, let's have a look at the update method. We already check if the distance from the samurai to the player is less than 3. And exactly here we are proving if this check, this distance check, has already been started. And if this is not the case, then we add this warning here. The samurai is warning the player. After that, we set the isDistance check to true. And if it had been set 
to true before, then we start to count down the time that is left for the player to stay in this distance to the Samurai. And to do this I subtract the time delta time and this is the time in seconds it took to complete the last frame. Ok, and now we know if this time left variable is less or equals to zero, then we will actually start the attack. And this is done by calling animator, set bool, attack, to true. Alright, this is the attack logic. But now we have the else case. This is when the player is leaving this dangerous distance. Then we have to set the attack to false. We have to disable the distance check and set the time left variable to the default which is 3. Alright we're almost done the only thing that is left is to send the damage to the player when he is hit. And this will be done in the implementation of the animation event attack end. So let's write a method for this public void attack end and in this one I'm going to send the damage to my player and I have some methods prepared in my player controller script. The first one is the onHit method. This is sending the damage points to the player and the second one is checking if the player is already dead and if he's dead he's playing a dead animation. Okay, I will write this down and then we can have a look at the implementation of these methods. So let's open the onHit method of the player controller. This one is first playing the hit animation of the player by using the animator controller of the player. And then the damage points are sent to the game manager which is actually just subtracting these damage points from the current health points. And then he's calling the method do dead by damage. <laughs> bit of a strange name and this one is just checking if the damage points or if the damage is already exceeded which means the player is already dead and if he is then he's playing a dying animation. Okay that's all and now let's start the game and test this. Okay my player is entering the dangerous distance. Three seconds exceeded and now oh he's hit he's hit hard again entering and he's dead. Oh, but what happens here? That guy is slashing on and on. No, that's not good. We have to stop this. We have to return to the script. And in the update method, we have to check if the player is already dead. And if he is, we are stopping the attack animation and returning from the method. Alright, and with this implementation, we will try this again. Okay, you were warned, mister, and now he is swinging the sword three times, we are dead, and then he stops slaying. Really good, I'm happy with this implementation. Okay, this works nicely. In the next one about Irwin's time warp, we have to find a way to outwit this samurai so that he's moving away from the bridge. We will see. So stay tuned. If you like my tutorials, please subscribe to not miss a future one. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for supporting me. And see you soon on JNM.